Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So today I want to take a look at a brand new retro computing magazine called Paleotronic. So let's get started. Paleotronic is a new retro computing magazine that's available from the dynamic duo of April and Melody Ayers Griffiths. You might recall that at last summer's Kansas Fest, they actually gave a demonstration of a new Apple II emulator that they had created called Micro M8. And this was the emulator that actually lets you play Apple II computer games in 3D by tilting the screen so that the pixels appeared to kind of poke out of the screen. The Paleotronic magazine was actually started as a Kickstarter where they raised 7,000 Australian dollars to begin the magazine. And this is how I found out about it first when I subscribed to the Kickstarter. Subscription prices are 55 Australian dollars and shipping to the US is another 48 Australian dollars. And so the total price works out to about 80 US dollars. Uh, for six issues. And although this isn't cheap, it's actually worth every penny. So April and Melody have done a fantastic job at gathering and laying out the content. And every page is just a feast for the eyes with an extremely high information density. If you take a look at just a few of these pages, you'll see that they're just crammed full of information. So for the first issue, what they've decided to do is take a look at the retro computers of the 60s, 70s, and 80s through the lens of the Consumer Electronics Show, which is held in Las Vegas every year. And so what they've done is presented more or less a chronological history of the CES show, highlighting the different technologies uh, for that particular year and the impact they had on retro computing. And then they've also interspersed this with interesting articles such as an interview with Steve Wozniak on the evolution of the Disc 2. They have another interview with Jason Scott on preservation activities at the Internet Archive, as well as an interview with 4AM, the mysterious cracker of Apple II software. So each page is chock full of snippets of interesting text from magazines back in the day, as well as modern interpretations of that technology and how it evolved over the years. And just like any good computer magazine from back in the day, it actually has a program listing for a game that you can type in, and in this case it's Tetris, since they're talking about the evolution of Tetris throughout the ages. One thing that's really interesting is that the magazine doesn't cater to any particular platform. It ranges the gamut from Apple computers, Atari, Commodore, Sinclair, some of the lesser known uh, mainframes, as well as things like videotape, VCRs, uh, compact discs, and other technology uh, from the 70s and 80s. And you get a real feel for kind of what the industry was going through as well as how it evolved. Uh, there are a couple things about the magazine that I didn't particularly like. Uh, for example, for some of the little snippets of text, they're actually a little bit hard to read, and even though some of them were there just as little interesting filler, you actually do kind of want to actually read all of it. And so it would have been nice if some of them would have been printed just a little bit bigger. One other little nit that somewhat annoyed me was in some of the articles, they have little words in different colors. So for example, you can see on this page, uh, there's little snippets of text that are in different colors, and these really look like hyperlinks. And in fact, I thought they were links, but when I went on to the PDF version of the print magazine, they actually aren't hyperlinks. And I talked to April Melody Griffiths, and she said that this was actually just kind of a style convention just to make things stick out. Uh, but it actually was a little bit annoying because I really wanted it to be hyperlinks to more information or else I just didn't want to see them highlighted at all. So maybe this is something that they could just change in the future. Other than those two little nits, the magazine itself is just amazing. So they've just done a fantastic job of capturing the spirit both of retro computer magazines from back in the day, but also giving them a modern feel. Since it's a new magazine, they're also looking for contributions from readers. 
So if you have an interesting idea for an article or a story, you can email them and they'll give you, they say, up to $1,000 uh, for your article. So that might be a fun way to get one of your ideas into print. So if you're interested in Paleotronic, I'll have links in the show notes so you can subscribe to either the digital or the print edition. And I'm sure you'll find it just as fascinating as I did. So thanks for watching.